Welcome to the 2020 KDO Cowl Overview. To give you a little bit of background information on KDO or Knitter's Day Out, it's a nonprofit event organized by a volunteer committee. Its whole purpose and commitment is to spread the love of knitting to the greater community. KDO celebrates 35 years with this year's event, which is being held on September 25th and 26th. If you do an online search for Knitter's Day Out, you will find the website and all the information on the virtual classes and lectures that will be, be held on those dates, September 25th and 26th. So let's get to the cowl. As in the past, a free cowl pattern has been offered by KDO. It's created for you to make and to wear to KDO. And even though this year's event is a virtual one, we will provide an opportunity for you to show off your cowl. We want to see it and we want to know if you've done any changes. We want to, we want to hear from you and we want to see your cowl. So what will you need? Well, the first thing you need is, um, a, is a DK weight yarn. All I did was go to my stash and find a DK weight that was approximately 225 yards. A size 6 needle with a 32 inch cable or a needle that will obtain gauge 20 stitches for 4 inches. Now it's important to stitch a swatch even though gauge is not critical on a cowl like this. But a different gauge may change your yardage, so save some time and do a swatch. The other thing you need is a cable needle. Uh, there's all kinds of cable needles, but the one that I found, and it's not actually a cable needle, is this little notion that has a crochet hook on one end and a point and, and like a needle point on the other. So when you do, this is an 8x8 eight eight cable, so when you pick up those stitches, you use the crochet end, hold them in the back, and then when you go to knit them, you have the point of the needle to knit them off the cable. You will also need stitch markers. Any kind will do. You've got the circular kind, you've got those that are hanging, whatever you are comfortable with is what will work here. And you will need 10 of them. The other thing that you will need is a tapestry needle. This one happens to have just a little bit of a crook at the end, but you don't have to have a needle like that. A straight tapestry needle will work. And the last thing that you will need are eight shank buttons, four of one kind and four of another. We'll be creating what's called a double button, where there'll be a button tied together and will be used between the natural buttonholes created by the crossing of the cables. And we'll get to that in just a minute. So let's talk about the cowl itself. It's knit flat. It's knit back and forth following charts or written instructions, which are given in the pattern. It's knit from the bottom to the top. It begins and ends with a three by three, a knit three, purl three ribbing. The main body incorporates three separate motifs. They resemble a pathway. And what happens is when you turn it over, those knit stitches of the path become purl stitches. So you end up with a slightly different pattern. It's the same motif, it's just, it's just reversible. So it makes the whole cowl reversible. Now at either end, what is knitted is a cable border. The cable stitches are in a ribbed pattern. If you look, it's a knit one, purl one, so that when you do the eight stitches, there's four knit stitches and four purl stitches, which are crossed you end up with a reversible cable. Now the rows where the cables cross is where your buttonholes will be. They form a natural buttonhole right at the edge of your cowl. So you end up with four buttonholes on both ends of your cowl. So let's talk about the buttons or double buttons which are unique to this border edge because of the cable. 
the buttons are not sewn onto the cowl. Instead, what we do, what we're going to do, what I'm going to show you is that the two buttons are sewn together. So you end up with a double button. It needs to be a double button because of the thickness of the buttonhole due to the cable. So let me demonstrate. I'll pull my camera a little closer to show you how to do this. So let's make double buttons. What I've done is I've taken, oh, probably about a yard of yarn. It's the same yarn from the cowl, the DK weight. And I first of all make sure that my needle fits through my shank. Sometimes you 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 think you're you're doing great and then you come to find out it doesn't fit through. So you thread your yarn onto your needle. Put my ends together to even them up. When I get to the needle, just kind of pull it along until I get it. Whoops, these are my buttons. Until I get it to where it's ready to go. Put your needle through the one shank. Leave about three inches. Go through the other button. And you end up with your two buttons together. So you take your ends, one in each hand, and you're going to tie a knot, a, but it's called a surgeon's knot. It starts out like a double knot where you do one, like this one is left over right, and you pull it. Then you're going to go right over left, only you're going to do it once, and then a second time. You're going to put it through and pull it, pull it tight. Then you take your scissors and you leave a little bit of an end and you have a double button. Now you can move on to the next set. Put it, I'll do it one more time. Put it through the one button and through the other button. Hold it in your hand. I tend to do it this way for some reason. Now we'll do it the opposite way. Just It's right over left once, pull it, and it's tight. And then it's left over right once, and then again, hold on to it, pull it tight, and then take it and cut your ends. I'll leave a little bit, not too short. I don't want it to come apart. And what you end up with is four sets of buttons. Voila! Double buttons. So what you end up with are four sets of double buttons. You've taken eight shank buttons and they've become four sets of buttons. When you add the buttons to the buttonholes, this is where the fun begins. You can put them straight through on the four buttonholes or you can do it on the back buttonholes. You can do the one way I wore it was to make it asymmetrical where you offset the buttons. Instead of buttoning the two at the top, I buttoned the two at the bottom that I could fold over the top. And actually I have it upside down. So we put the buttons off and you can wear it either way. And, and then I put the button so that button showed at the top. You can also take your cowl and you can, I have to move this over just a little bit, you can flip it, put your buttons in and put this on your shoulder so that you have the, the Mobius strip will go around in the front. So there's all kinds of ways to play with this cowl and how to wear it. So have fun. Play with different looks. Stay in front of the mirror and try different things. You can also fold it in half and button it in different ways so that it's open. So have fun. That's the most important part of all this is to enjoy creating it, knitting it, but also to enjoy your creation. 
If you have any questions, go to the pattern and that will direct you as to where you can ask your questions. So please enjoy your cow.